The Industrial Revolution spawned a new social class. Since feudal times, land had been owned by the nobles. They passed their land on to future generations, and so this upper-class wealth was inherited. Others could work for the landowner as a peasant or craftsman or merchant, and there were many other jobs a person could have as well. But since the land was owned by the nobility, they maintained the power. And the ultimate authority was the monarch, the king, or sometimes the queen. When the Industrial Revolution began, the people who had made the initial investments in the inventions and the factories, and even the factory managers and lawyers and bankers who processed the investments, all became very rich once the Industrial Revolution takes off. The nobles wanted a share of the wealth, so they began to sell their land to get money to invest. Now, the nobles typically didn't have a lot of free cash. Their wealth and power was tied to land ownership. Eventually, a new class emerged that was quite wealthy, but had not inherited their wealth, so they didn't belong to the noble or upper class. Thus, a new social class emerged the middle class. The middle class again was quite wealthy. Think Bill Gates wealthy. But no one respected them because they weren't part of the upper class society. They wanted to show off their wealth and they wanted respect. So they began to act like nobility. And at the time, the most influential noble of them all was Queen Victoria. Now, Queen Victoria is currently the longest reigning British monarch, although the current Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, is catching up to her, and any day I might have to um, change that statement. But since Victoria was queen for so long, and since towards the end of her reign there were a lot of photographs taken of her, we tend to think of her as an older woman. But back in 1837, she was a young queen, and she had many children and this kind of dashing husband, and she was the real trendsetter. She was the one that everybody wanted to dress and act and be like. Kind of the best example I can give you is that in 1861, her husband, Albert, died, and she decided that she was going to wear black for the rest of her life. She was going to be a widow wearing black, and if you remember anything about the 1800s, you'll remember that widows always wore black. Why? Because Queen Victoria wore black, and she was a widow, and everybody followed what Victoria did because she was their role model. The middle class was searching for respect, and they got respect by acting like the queen. And this is why in the next few days when we do some Victorian activities and we get into all the standards of, of social etiquette, how you were to act and dress and, and whatnot, you'll see it's quite restrictive. But again, they were always trying to emulate and act like Queen Victoria. Now, the other thing, aside from how they dressed and act, was they paid particular attention to material possessions. And you'll notice if you walk around town, you'll see many very large, old-fashioned houses. And we call these homes Victorian homes because this was when they were built. The middle class wanted to really call attention to the fact that they were wealthy. And so you'll see their houses are very ornate. They've got three stories. The rooms are very large. Lots of detail around the windows and porches and whatnot. And when you get inside the house, you'll see that the furniture is also very large, overstuffed. We've got the cloth feet and the crystal and the marble and the gold. Okay, this is all Victorian style furniture. Here we have kind of the more typical picture of Queen Victoria that you see. And you may have heard that this whole kind of 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s is in fact called the Victorian age. She was quite influential herself, but it's important to note that she had 38 grandchildren. And since princes marry princesses, her grandchildren became the heads of state all across Europe. And this will have future consequences.